couple of weeks ago, my friend Will came over and brought his e-bike. We had discussed going camping, and uh, the more we talked about it, the more excited we got about it. It was an overnight camping trip. You can see we were loaded for bear. We had all the comforts of home to bring along with us. We rode through uh, the nice trail system that our town here uh, has, as is Great Falls, Montana. And you can see that the trails are beautiful, but we didn't want to be on asphalt. We were heading out till we finally reached a place where we could turn off the paved trail and onto the dirt. We rode out for quite a bit till we got out to where nobody was coming around or hardly anybody. I had done a little research uh, beforehand just through the many times that I rode out in this area and I discovered a couple places where you could camp and not be in anybody's way. The trail got rough but the e-bikes handled it just fine. Here comes Will up behind me here. Yeah, most of the time he was out front. <laughs> this is his first time out there and he was having a blast. <laughs> well, we just stopped for a we just stopped for a breather and got to chatting, but that's what we're out here for anyway. And now Will's heading down the trail and I'm heading after him. <laughs> trying to. Okay, there we go. The yucca plants stick out into the narrow bike path. <laughs> and you get your ankles stabbed. <laughs> Boy, what a beautiful place, though. Well, this is the first time that I've gotten to ride with somebody. And uh, Will, Will and I have been friends for quite a while, but uh, I don't know anybody else that rides e-bikes uh, in my town. I know there are, but n nobody that I know. I brought along a good first aid kit. <laughs> Figured we might need it, us two old guys out here. <laughs> Will's a lot younger than me though. And of course I brought my Garmin in reach because we lose cell service out here. So we can at least get a hold of somebody. One thing I wanna do for sure, even though I got slime in my tires, I think actually I got flat out in this bike, but I want to stay out of the ground cactus. And if you get off trail here, there's ground cactus everywhere. It's the kind that goes through the sole of your shoe goes through a tire pretty easy. The only flats that I've had have been from ground cactus, spines.
passing the last sign of trail civilization, that little gazebo back there. Little shelter is what it is. Well, I've got it down in pedal assist level number one, so I don't get going too fast. Boy, this Magicycle goes up these hills so nice. Hey, wait a minute, Will. Hold up. Don't go too far. You'll see kind of a clear space on the left side right here on top of the knoll. Yeah, right up here a little bit on the left side. And then I'll tell you what the other spot's like. I think it's up there. Yeah, I've got this bike loaded down. And uh, it's still doing the hills really well. And I just love it. Right now is a good time to mention our sponsor, which is Magicycle. I choose to ride their step-through cruiser on my adventures. Click on the link below to check out their website. Well, believe it or not, we're actually on city property out here. This might be home. You open up this valve. It's a Paco pad. It's a self inflator. Takes a couple minutes. Once you sleep on a Paco pad, you never go back. Now, Will knows what he's talking about. He used to be a forest ranger. Once you go Paco, you never turn back. I'm going to try stealing that from him before nightfall. <laughs> you say when you pry for my cold, dead hands. <laughs> hey, we almost got this handled. Yep. Now if we could, the heat turns down a notch or two, we'll be real good. It's going to be a nice evening. Well, here's my meager setup. I got a foam exercise pad and then uh, this uh, Ecotech. I've slept on this without the foam pad underneath it before and I actually do pretty well and I can sleep on my side with it. Ecotech Outdoors is hibern, insulated, and then I've got way too much sleeping bag here but I'm just going to use it as a like a throw just to cover myself when it gets cold. And a super cheap tent. It's doing it, I guess. Well, we're just fixing some late lunch here. Will just had a sandwich that he brought. Nice looking one. And I'm just practicing for an upcoming trip that Linda and I have planned. I won't tell you about it right now, but it's going to involve a lot of freeze dried meals. You guys like the desert. Yeah, but we don't go down when it's hot. Yeah. Well, I got the Chili Mac. Yeah, it doesn't look bad. It doesn't smell bad. You know, that wasn't bad. This one was the uh, Chili Mac with beef, Mountain House, and uh, it needed salt. <laughs> but other than that, it was pretty tasty. Not bad.
It's not like Linda's uh, cooking, but it'll do. Speaking of which, Linda's home with uh, our 13 year old granddaughter and they're going shopping, having a good time. And uh, so they didn't mind me taking off overnight. And we just got out here just to kick back and enjoy the evening out here. Well, Will and I were just sitting in camp talking and he mentioned, he says, oh, he points at this rise behind us and he says, you know, if I was an Indian back in the day, he says, I would have posted a lookout up there because you can see all the way up and down the river. So we're going up there just to look for uh, flakes from tool making because that would be one thing that a lookout would have done while he was sitting there. He would have been flaking tools. We're going to go have a look. Lead the way in case there's snakes, okay? That's a strange piece of something. I don't even know what it is. I think it's a rock. Yep. Uh, no, that's a North Dakota rock. That's just another effing rock. Of course, if you really want to avoid snakes, you don't want to be the second person in line. The first person goes by, the snake coils, strikes the next person in line. <laughs> so you want to be the first person. Well, we're up on top that point. And now we're just kind of look around for uh, signs of those that have been here before us. Well, we haven't found anything so far, but it doesn't matter. Look at the beauty here. There's nobody out here. This is peaceful and quiet, except for the tinnitus in my ear. Other than that, it's quiet. Holy cow. Look what, at this. Did you find an artifact? I did. A perfectly good skipping stone. Round on the top, flat on bottom, that's good for at least 10 skips. Okay, I'll tell you what though. It's one steep cliff and a long way down to the water here. <laughs> you go, okay? <laughs> that's a nice smooth place to sit. Yeah, so we will just notice this rock sitting here overlooking the river. But you know that rock's been laying there for many thousands or even million years and you know that everybody that's walked by here has sat on that and looked out at the water. Pretty cool. Yeah, and this rock is perfectly comfortable. <laughs> so here's something that's strange to walk and find tops of nail heads in the ground. Man, that is weird. And why would somebody do that? I have no idea. What is it? Is it a dinosaur egg? What would be that? Actually, it's kind of cool. <laughs> Just another rock, I think. I think so. It's pretty smooth. It's weird. Yeah. Yep. Pretty neat. Unhatched. Very smooth. Hmm. Could go to the collection. Yeah, that because that's going to shine up. Yep. Cool. Hmm. We might have to excavate. We just came across this. This is pink and black. And, uh... I found a smaller one in this area a couple of months ago. Uh, this is the oldest, from what I understand, this is the oldest rock you can find in Montana. We're talking millions and millions and millions of years old. Uh, this is the oldest stone there is here. I might have to come dig this up, but I'm afraid it's big. <laughs> it's a uh, pretty good size. And of course, if that was uh, polished up, it'd be pinker and blacker. That's a pretty nice one with that band in the middle. Well, we didn't find anything too special, but we sure had a lot of fun. It's time to go back and take the evening off. I don't know. There's another hour and a half of sun left here. We'll probably find some trouble to get into. Around 14 pounds. 
So we're going to figure out how to pack this out of here. <laughs> we dug it up. Ah, cool. Boy, that's going to clean up and be, be nice and black and pink. Yeah, what a beauty. Yeah, good for you. We'll figure out how to get it out of here. <laughs> I'll just have uh, Rick put in his pack. Yeah, Linda does that to me all the time. <laughs> well, I seem to have missed any rattlesnakes, so we're good to go. Well, there's no rain in the forecast, but we're going to put our rain flies on because it does look like some thunderstorms kind of forming out there in the distance. Well, we had a pretty pleasant night. Uh, heard the coyotes howling and uh, no other wildlife disturbed us. <laughs> it got pretty chilly in the morning, got down to about 40 degrees, so you know, for summer weather, that's pretty, that's pretty cold. Got up, made some cowboy coffee. It's been the strangest thing with rabbits here. It's like we're sitting on this rabbit highway. I've been trying to catch some as they, on video as they go by, but since we got here yesterday, we've seen dozens of rabbits at two or three at a time, and they're moving right this way coming coming this way there must be a den up here or something it's just tons of rabbits just the oddest thing and they walk right by us it's like they're not afraid of us they'll be you know 10 12 feet away and just look at us and just walk, hop on by and but then here comes one now he's late he's late for a very important date Is he carrying a pocket watch? So you see what I mean? Every few minutes or so, another one comes through and it's been going on since yesterday. <laughs> Maybe there's a convention. Yeah, I didn't realize we were camped on a rabbit thoroughfare. <laughs> it's kind of funny. They're kind of cute. Jack rabbits just coming by one after the other. We had a, a fellow stop by our camp last night and said he had encountered a rattlesnake just a hundred yards up here. And he told us that right next to our camp was a rattlesnake den. And they're, they're all over through here anyway. You got to watch every step you take whenever you're moving around here. Walk slowly like I'm walking right now slowly. And if, if, I, if, if I'm not looking where I'm going, then stop. <laughs> you're either looking where you're going or stop. And you know, like if you want to look around at the, at the scenery and stuff, you stop first you don't continue walking while you're looking around but with all these rabbits it makes you wonder <laughs> there's millions of rabbits and uh i don't know you would think that uh the pot rabbit population would be less with if there was that many uh snakes in the area but eating the the babies and stuff but i don't know oh it's a beautiful morning i know some people are going to suggest snake boots but have you ever worn them they are hot as heck. Uh, you can't hardly stand to have them on. So I just prefer to move very carefully. That's all. Will was pretty funny. He had never ridden bike on trail like this. And he was excited about going, but... I got to tell you, he was way out ahead of me. 
he was going like gangbusters. I told him, I says, just just have at it and be careful. I says, because I'll, I'll catch up to you. I tend to go a little slower, but he was having so much fun. Well, last night on this stretch of the river, the fish started jumping. The bugs came out, uh, just clouds of gnats and some mosquitoes. But you know what else came out? Well, because the fish were all coming to the surface, the um, falcons came out and they were fishing and one after the other flew by our camp with a fish in its talons heading for its nest somewhere. But it was, it was pretty cool to see it. It was funny because Will loaded up about 20 pounds of rock. <laughs> so his bike is carrying quite a bit. Careful on this one. Yeah, you must have missed the rock that I got bounced on. I'm always impressed with being able to get this heavy, heavy load including my heavy, heavy self up those steep embankments. Hello, how are you? Aren't you a good dog? <laughs> That wasn't the way I intended to come, by the way. Yeah, the way we just came. Yeah, I know, you get down now, come on down. Okay, watch out. Oop, watch out. Okay, you better go back now. Hello. Hi. What a beautiful dog. Excuse me, who are you supposed to be with? <laughs> come here. Oh, no, he's, come he's, here. he's beautiful. He knows that crick is coming up. He's beautiful. Okay. Go ahead, you guys. All righty. Thank you. He's a sweetheart. Yeah, I can he tell. Has, uh, the word enthusiastic. Yeah, there you go. Uh, you're losing your load on the back. There you go. I'm just kicking my butt. Well, we're done with all the steep hills. All we got is that hill in front of us. That's it. It's a it's a shallow one. A lot. It seems like there's more. Bumps. <laughs> it's that it's that rock. It's your rock. Uh, your load of rocks there. We should have brought a dump truck. Well, after being on a bumpy, rocky trail, uh, there's nothing like riding on fresh asphalt. Hey guys, thanks for coming along on this trip. As you can see, Linda and I are venturing closer to home, and we all know the reason for that. It's these gas prices. But we're making the best of it. Uh, we're rediscovering Montana. I hope you're enjoying it. If you did, you know what to do. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you around.